scheduled meeting of the regular uh, council meeting for Wednesday, October 13th at 6.30 p.m. Would you call the roll, please? Present. Councilwoman Knappel? Here. Councilman Dockoff? Here. Councilman Eagle? Here. Councilman Peters? Here. Councilman Petty? Here. Vice Mayor Reeves? Here. City Attorney Mullins? Okay, has everybody had a chance to read the minutes from September 2nd? If so, motion to approve. Motion to second. Approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any uh, opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, consideration of bills over 2000. Madam Clerk. Um, we have our wet bill, which is $3,660.21. The FEMA bill for $7,205, and that is on our sewer plant that comes due every year. Motion approved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Um, do we have any Carthage citizens here who would like to speak to any concerns? Okay. Um, then we have the mayor's report. A uh, couple things here, just because this happened after our last meeting. Uh, the swimming pool had a fantastic season. Instead of in spite of starting late, Sally did an amazing job as she always does. She brought in Rita Dickerson to uh, have aerobics classes. It started from six women to about 20 something. And they all wanted to come back next year, so it was a great season. Um, we've got the temporary lights at the ball field. They're really thankful for that. Uh, we want to thank Tommy Pittman at Upper Cumberland for expediting that to get those open and running. Uh, if you haven't looked lately, when you go to Walmart, uh, a few weeks back, it's been some time now, they put reflective turning lanes because everybody was saying it was hard to see those lanes in the dark. So as a safety measure, they came out. So if you're turning left off of Upper Cumberland, uh, Upper Ferry onto 25, you've now got lights that will, on the road, that will show you how to run in the same way coming out. Um, had a great view toward Bailey, uh, a marker here with people from uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame. His family came in from Chicago and Nashville. We had the author of his book, David Morton, who spoke about the biography. Great Walton Day Festival, as you all know. We're looking at uh, Halloween Trunk or Treat coming up on the 31st, so keep that on your calendars, everybody, from by the 7 downtown. We've got the Market Fest coming again on November 6th. Uh, Saturday, so we can know any vendors or taxi people. Saturday, November 6th, ask them to sign up for the booths. It's going to be really nice this time. We've got some extra things for the kids and um, just a few of fun treats. Um, we had a meeting with, a great meeting this afternoon with uh, John Kelly Lish and some of the scout folks who set a time for uh, his grand opening. We won't tell it now. I'll let him announce that. but. Uh, We've come up with a time and a special way to open and dedicate the park, and we want to thank him again for the amazing job he did on this dog park. So um, probably in the, in the next day or two, he'll have an announcement on his page about that, and then we'll put it on our Facebook page, too. Uh, we hope everybody will come out and support it, because, um, again, he did an amazing job on this park, and I thank him very much. It's something that Carthage, a lot of people have wanted for a long time, so that's really, really wonderful. Um, we have, that's my report, of uh, Attorney Mullins, do you have anything you want to report on by June? Uh, Attorney Mullins? He's so relaxed, he's locked his uh, Yeah. Okay. I, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, can yes, we me? can hear you, yes, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, so, one thing that I'm working on I, is the King uh, Trail. Mayor notified me that the uh, contracting company has not completed the walking trail, or at least the last I knew had not completed the walking trail. Uh, based upon my looking over the contract and the completion date, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe the start date was somewhere June or something, the end of June. They had 90 days to have the trail completed. Uh, I think the oh, end date would have been sometime towards the end of September. They haven't completed that. There's liquidated damages sections. Basically, I'm going to say this, this isn't legally correct, but what they are is penalties for not uh, having it done. So I sent them a letter the other day. i um, yet to hear anything back on that. 
Um, there was an issue that come up in the past few weeks about Upper Cumberland had installed a, unit, a new utility pole in front of um, Robin Moore's office um, there. Uh, Miss Moore was contending that uh, when UCMC left the hole, there was water running in her basement. There, this was about a week ago. There was going to be rain, whichever rain that was, the last week or so. But I believe Les, maybe Les was on vacation. Somebody went up there and maybe they put some uh, uh, some hot mix in it for a temporary fix. And UCMC is supposed to be contacting uh, the some the city's contractor that you guys use to pre concrete the sidewalk, and they're going to be responsible for paying for all of that. So that's the last I knew about that. Um, I guess the last pressing issue that needs to be brought to your attention, I was informed by the mayor that there's a business in town that uh, is currently operating that doesn't have a valid business permit. Um, there was also an issue that, and I don't know, I've not seen it for myself, but pursuant to the last attorney's letter, that they were possibly uh, drinking alcohol on premises or serving alcohol on premises without a valid liquor license. I believe that the Roses building, I'm not sure what what business it is there. I sent her, a, the owner of it, a letter. I uh, spent over 10 days ago stating that she needed to get some type of license to come to the city hall and apply for a permit if she wanted some type of liquor license. As of today, she hasn't, as far as I know, I spoke with her this morning, and uh, as far as I know, she hasn't um, obtained any type of license for that business. So our next avenue would be to uh, cite her to, civil, to city court. Um, I guess let the city judge make a ruling on it as to whether or not the business can stay open. Um, or maybe he, he'll give her a time frame and put in order of how long she needs to obtain a valid license. So that's where we're, that's where I'm at at the moment. Okay. Any, all right. Thank you. Um, the next city recorder. I have nothing for my office time unless you guys have questions. Okay. Chief Davis, do you have from the police department? Yes, ma'am. I, I don't have anything other than just the monthly report. If y'all have any questions for me, please feel free to ask. We're happy to help you anyway. Okay. okay. Um, in public work, Mr. Rice, I don't have nothing. We started the leaf truck up 90, so we're setting that leaves. So if y'all got any, write them out. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, water and sewer, is there? Yeah, you're right there. Oh, oh. I didn't, you don't have the yellow one. I didn't recognize you. Uh, only thing I want to talk about is the, uh, I run some numbers on the swimming pool as far as water usage. Uh, before it was fixed, uh, we used 3,200,000 gallons for a total cost of $20,800. After we got it fixed, we used 378,760 gallons for a cost of $2,462. Wow. So that saved the city $18,338. Wow, that's wow. great. Wow. So that's all I have unless you have any questions. Say how much we saved again? That's fantastic. $18,338. Wow. That's Thank paid you. for itself. Just on water. It will. That's, that's really great. <laughs> really great. Um, what did that cost again originally? The repair. 281, I think it was. 281. 281. Okay. But About 15, 16 years, something like that, pay for itself. Yeah, and plus. Plus, the fact we're going to have to close the pool down. Yeah. We couldn't, you know. We'll have a longer season next year. Yeah, we'll have a much longer season. And I think, in spite of everything, we did a really great job financially this year, too. So, a lot of people should be So, thank you. That's good news. Okay. Um, Rusty? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I was talking to Derek about the water savings, so I figured ours up where we went from the so chlorine I'm gas. Steve, I didn't shoot a minute. Steve, please. We went from the chlorine gas to the uh, bleach, mm -hmm. and uh, we're using about 1.3 million gallon a year or less of water, so that's a little over $10,000 a year we're saving the city. Wow. So you take what we did in the swimming pool, you're close to $30,000 a year savings. So right. um, other than that, I want to recognize Derek and Les. I had a one of my main pipes in the plant yesterday, got three hoses in it. 
uh, all down. They come down with a band, boom truck, and help me put a good band aid on it to hold it for a while longer. So mm -hmm. I appreciate their department coming down and bailing me out here yesterday. Fantastic. So, that's Thank about you. it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is Chief Hyde here? Hello. Okay. Um, then let's go to the engineer grant reports. Um, so I'm just going to I'm just going to break them down because we've got two different engineers. So if you don't mind, we'll start with Mr. Jones here. And he's got three projects. So Mr. Jones, are you on? Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Okay. Uh, I tell you what, Will, do you mind uh, muting and then we'll hear Mr. Jones or see him there? That's not Mr. Jones right there. Yeah, just like the log. <laughs> Okay. I think you got to click on his picture. Well, oh, it's supposed to come on the speaker. Can we hear you talk, Mr. Jones, please? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. All right, there you go. All right, good deal. Okay, the first one, if you could tell us a little bit about the I, &I project, this pilot project we have going. Yes, ma'am. So on the I, &I project, uh, as everybody knows, you did get approved. You have a project which is 50% uh, principal forgiveness. Uh, from uh, SRF, uh, we're working, uh, we and George Kurz uh, are working together on that. We got received a proposal earlier today uh, to get your flow monitoring equipment out and we anticipate having flow monitoring equipment in man, seven manholes uh, around the 1st of November. Um, that will, once that flow monitoring is, we have some good flow monitoring data, that's gonna help us hone in on where to do smoke testing. So we're, we're taking a very methodical approach at this because even though you have a loan, which is for one certain number, uh, half of which is, is forgiven, uh, our goal is to not spend that whole number. Uh, I think everybody, myself and everybody in that room included, would be very happy with that. Uh, we want to make sure that we get a good understanding of what's going on in your system and we help you all identify the areas in which we can remove this inflow and infiltration to lower the amount of flow going to the wastewater plant and take some of the pressure off uh, Steve Key and uh, his staff. But to do that, as I said, we're taking a methodical approach. So what's going to happen there is we're going to get some flow data. Uh, we're going to start to see which basins, what areas in the city have really high flows when it rains. Once we're able to do that, then we're going to be able to deploy people to do smoke testing. So that from there, we're going to be able to identify uh, Sewers that are connected to the storm sewer, uh, broken clean outs, uh, you know, just fractured pipe, uh, you know, and that's going to help us once we know, then that's going to help us move into, okay, what needs to be corrected? You know, where does money need to be spent fixing these problems in order to get rid of this I and I? Uh, so the whole process will really, I think you'll start to see some real uh, progress and we'll be able to have some preliminary meetings and show you some of this data and stuff once we get into the spring. Because honestly, the first two to three months is just going to be us getting a whole lot of data and being able to compile that data and start to look at and identify what parts of the system are the worst. You know, where are we seeing all of this extra flow come in that you have to treat and spend money on uh, treating that nobody's paying you to take? Uh, so that, that's kind of where we are now. Like I said, uh, in about two or three weeks, you're going to see people start putting in flow monitors. Uh, and then that data will, will become available in, uh, you know, early spring, probably around March. Uh, I anticipate being able to really sit down and start presenting some information uh, to the mayor and the council and staff uh, on what's going on in your system and where we're seeing these flows and how we think you can best go about, uh, you know, identifying which areas uh, need to be worked on first. Uh, and at the end of this whole project, when everything is said and done, what you've got is you've got a report that identifies where all your flows are coming from, which areas, and prioritize for repairs, and you will have the, a design for an initial I&I &I project in order to remove uh, this extraneous water from the system. Uh, and that will be for the area that is uh, deemed to be the highest priority, the number one priority on the list. Uh, and then so the next step will be to to start actually having contractors come in, make repairs on manholes, make repairs on pipe, uh, and keep this water from coming into the system. And Mr. Jones, what we're kind of understanding from TDEC is once this pilot project is done, that sets us up to 
probably get some good grants to help with this because we'll have had this really amazing study I've done. Yes. Okay. This, this, all of this front end work sets you up on all of the grants uh, through CPBG, you know, any, any funding through community development block grants, uh, future TDEC, uh, SRF funds, uh, these infrastructure funds that are coming out. This kind of information puts you into the forefront of being able to get a hold of that money uh, and be able to apply that towards uh, making improvements in the system. So it absolutely, uh, you know, is going to be, as I told the mayor one time, I said, you know, there's two two typical approaches that are used when you have I and I problems in systems. And in small systems, a lot of times, the approach is let's fix the whole system. So if you go out and you fix the whole system, you've got 300 manholes, and we say, well, each manhole, you know, you assign a number to it. You know, you could spend three or four million dollars fixing the whole system. Through this I and I study, you know, we may find that only a third of the system needs work, and so therefore, you know, you're able to really scale down how much it costs the town of Carthage in the long frame, the long term, because we went, through, you went through the time to actually see where this flow is coming from. Uh, and identify the areas that need to be repaired. Okay, thank you. Then we're going to skip down to two more that you have, then then we'll be able to, if you want to stay around the can or if you want to get back to your vacation, either way. So the next one that we want to talk about is the water pump station, which was going to originally be the uh, water tank that we converted over. Mm -hmm. Just where are we with that? Just kind of briefly, where are we with that, please? Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me there. Uh, that project, uh, we open bids on that project tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, that will be at Town Hall. Uh, <clears throat> and so right now we've got six bidders for that project. Uh, anticipate all six bidders turning in a bid. Uh, and we're just waiting to see see where those numbers come in. I think everybody, you know, we go back to almost a year ago when we were talking about a, a water storage tank. And a lot's changed in the, in the economy since then. Uh, with the cost of things, but we're, uh, you know, we've got a lot of good bidders, we've got a lot of competition here, and I think, you know, we're going to get a very competitive price, um, you know, and we'll, and we'll see, we'll know exactly what that number is tomorrow uh, after the bid opening it too. Okay, thank you. And then the third one uh, we need to talk about is the Future Alley water line. The yes, ma'am. Uh, we did open bids on that. Uh, I have a letter. I'm assuming everyone has that in their packets. Uh, your low bidder uh, on that project was Isengard Construction Group, with a bid of $168,000, uh, approximately $168,376. Um, yeah, you know, I talked to the mayor and staff uh, about the bid, and it is the low bid. They are classified as a responsive bidder. There's no issues. We check their their references with other municipalities, other engineers, uh, you know, other other locations said that they had done uh, completed projects uh, similar to this and in a timely manner and that they would work with them again. Uh, I know you all have used them in the past for some other projects, um, but I think based on what pricing for materials are just today, right now, as compared to when we first thought about this project, which was almost two years ago, uh, going through the SRF process, I do believe that this is a, is a, is a good bid, um, and, and I recommend it in the letter to, to award the project. Um, you know, I told the mayor, uh, as far as keeping the contractor on time and getting the project done, that is that falls under the responsibility of the engineering firm. Uh, to make sure that the contractor is moving forward on the project. Uh, there are provisions in the contract, as with any contract, for liquidated damages um, and other uh, provisions which allow us to, you know, get the contractor to move forward with the project uh, and believe that, you know, at this point, unless uh, you all as council uh, have an issue with the bid, uh, that, that I would recommend uh, award of the bid uh, and the completion of the water line. I think we have a question here. Yes, um, what's, I got two questions. What's the timeline of the scope of work as far as that goes? The time frame on this bid, I apologize because I don't have the full book of birth. I believe it was 150 days for completion of the contract from the date of the notice to receive. And what, um, 
what area is that going to is that going to uh, cause road closures for 150 days or what's the no sir uh, there will be a road closure as they go as they work in well I don't want to say it's a road closure there will be um, a reduction of, of traffic down to a single lane as a, in one area there on Main Street uh, as we get rid of uh, two dead end water lines uh, and then the rest of the work will be uh, limited to the future alleyway uh, so there will be some you know that alleyway itself will be closed to any through traffic uh, while they're in, the, in there working because it is such a small area any other questions okay thank you mr jones uh, so, uh, appreciate it um, hope you enjoy your vacation all right thank you ma'am uh, then the other well Actually, four projects we're looking at. Uh, Ms. Engineer, Mr. White, do you want to you want to start with the fire hall bay extension? That's fine. <clears throat> the fire hall. We done the pre-construction last week. The building itself will be delivered on February the 25th. Is when the steel will show up. We've got him a notice to proceed starting January the third. Um, is what we've got tentatively scheduled for that. That gives him time to get started, get the uh, foundation done, and give him time to get the building finished in his uh, time frame uh, that he's got to get the building done. It puts him in April, to the middle of April, uh, or the end of April is when the time frame is up on that. Um, he uh, says he'll be here in December. The notice to proceed is only, it's, uh, the way the notice to proceed works is that's on or before. So he can actually start before his days start counting on January the 3rd. Um, but the <coughs> steel building won't be here till the 25th of February. We knew that all along when they all did. Um, back in July, they was giving us a 30 week leak period on the building. So that's not, he's actually ahead of schedule than what we thought. But that, that's the date they give him for it to be on site. Uh, that's the fire hall. Which one do you want me to go to next? Uh, would you go to, let's talk about the walking track if you would. All right, walking track. Um, Tuesday? Tuesday, yesterday. <laughs> uh, it's been a long week already. Um, yesterday we came down here, they started working on the grading to finish the drainage issues that still exist down there. He went ahead and done the striping on the concrete for the ADA parking. He's put parking buffers in, he's put the ADA signs up. So everything is done except for um, what we would consider warranty work where you're coming back and fixing what you've done done. So he's actually in the process of fixing the grading on the park. So Does that include the holes in the uh, paving? Yes, they fixed some of them. Uh, I was aware there was some more. Yeah, it was deplorable. So um, there'll be another, I mean, once he does this, we can walk through again, do another punch list um, and we get anything else that's left down there um, for him. That's got that as far okay. as I know. Um, <clears throat> how about Main Street Paving? Main Street Paving. We met with them <laughs> Tuesday also. The contractor wanted to have a meeting. Uh, so we went ahead and had a meeting. Their concern is the water line going down uh, Main Street. Uh, their main concern is if y'all are wanting to do fix that water line, they want it fixed um, before they pave. Um, they're afraid it's going to look bad on the town of Carthage and on their company if they come in here and pave that, and then y'all come in a year later and dig it up. Um, also, there was some. Uh, they're wanting to do um, one theory is to go in there and do casings under every side street that way they're already there they're good with that uh, I think uh, the mayor was going to look in to see if y'all could actually add that to an existing contract to do that or bid that out separate to do those casings that way they can pave uh, and then depending on the, the line that's actually in the road y'all can decide on that so that was their concern I was under the impression we didn't have any water lines on Main Street it runs down a travel lane. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not downtown, well, but on the Main Street. You do, yeah. Your water line comes up Ward Avenue and turns and goes out Main Street. No, no water line in front of your businesses or nothing. Uh, like where we're paving, there's 
from the map we looked by. It was like two or three years ago. There, there where does we, I thought it ended out there, um, you know, close to before the bridge there. Well, it We're talking about the north end. The north end. Mm -hmm. Okay. From yeah, Moore all the way to Sutherland. Okay. Right. Southern. Yeah. Do you, can you, I know I'm not trying to hold you to it, but in your mind, if we replace that water line, what would it kind of cost? Any ideas? A lot. <laughs> uh, nothing cheap. It's nothing cheap and it's a it becomes a road job. If you put it back in the road, it's a road job. I mean, you, you've got to put all stone in there and you've got to have your base paving and your topping paving so it becomes, and that's their concern is, you know, if you put down this, if you spend this 200 and wherever they was at, I can't remember, 223,000, and then you have to come back a year or two later and tear it up. I mean, it's going to look bad on, on yeah, everybody. Agree. So, yeah. And I agree, They and they also don't want to do something um, like those casings. You can't just put those casings in and come right behind them and pave, so there's going to be some time for it to settle uh, and let it um, get as compact as it can be before they pave or you're going to have a deal. There's no. I don't care how good they are, it's going to happen. So, you guys so Derek, didn't you guys run some estimating numbers? Yeah, um, every, all the research I've done, it's uh, the going rate's usually about a million dollars a mile. And I think that's seven tenths of a mile, so you're probably around $700,000 uh, yeah. to replace the water line. For Which may be the one reason it has more to be more than to use Yeah, we're going to definitely have to find some grants for this. So you're saying from Sorry, if you see this first, I'll call this. Go ahead, Steve. I'll take whoever. Well, what I'm saying is the company themselves suggested that we don't pave it until we do the water line, right? If you're going to do it. Well, I mean, they won't, they're basically, I know you don't know, but they're saying, <coughs> like, if you know you're going to have to fix this thing, they're trying to look out for your best interest. Right. And I, we appreciate that. And from my understanding, we're going to have to replace that water line. Is that not a correct it, statement? It needs to, yeah. Listen, Derek, y'all could probably answer this best, but. It's my opinion that those water lines are pushing 100 years old. Yeah. And why pave over a 100 year old line? Sorry, go ahead. I so, apologize. Um, so you're saying from war to fight, there's a water line? From war to smother, there's water. Okay. But from war down to the bridge, there's no water line. To, to where it comes the water line goes across the Second Avenue at the post office. So. We'd have to replace Second Avenue as well, so we'd be basically looking at the only place without a water line is between Second and Ward. No, no, uh -uh. it just starts at Ward and goes all the way to Smotherland. We're not replacing. No, no, I'm asking where there's no water line between Second and Ward, correct? Right. No. Okay, but it don't make sense to pave between Second and the bridge and fight in college if we're going to have to replace the water line. No, it doesn't make sense to we replace the water lines to pave anything. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, my opinion is that I don't think the Main Street is the worst pavement in this in this city, but y'all y'all own it every day. Uh, if we don't already have a grant to do this, doesn't it make sense to get a grant to replace the water line before we get going on this? Yes, that's, that's what we're, we're, we're looking. <laughs> okay. We're looking. Help us look, because we're hoping some of this this American relief fund coming down, which is for infrastructure, and believe me, we're going to need several million if we're really looking at replacing the water and sewer this time. So we're going to need to get that paid, but there ain't no point paving if we're going to tear it back up. No, and, yeah. but we keep we've been kicking this in for how long? Yeah. I think we've got I think we've got, I think we've got worse roads that need paving. That was that, that was the contract that was what folk can say uh, you know if you want to they've got a price i don't know if they'd be willing to change roads with this price i'm going to say they probably would entertain it um but basically they're saying you know don't waste this money if you're going to dig it up and i agree with them it's well, uh, we didn't well, find out to, we didn't find out the water line being bad until after it was bid but and, and they're willing to hold the, it right now. didn't we kind of talk through it and say that if they can't do this till april we might be able to to get that water line fixed before then if we can find the funding for it. Right? I don't think you'll get it com I don't think you'll get the construction done by April. I think you might find out well, you can get plans done and approved. Let me ask Mr. This. Jones felt a little differently. But, yeah. You were saying something about get to plan it and check on it two years later or something like that? 
What was that? Did I mishear that? They said they paid it and tear it up. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. They're just saying, you know, because they're saying it ain't been paid. One of them lives here. He's a resident. Yeah. That works for them. So he's got a he's got a town interest in mine too. Because that's just their company looking. Because <laughs> I mean, it's gonna look bad on everybody. So, um, but his point was. Um, if y'all are aware of a situation after they beat it, <clears throat> then address it. Don't just go ahead and pay this and waste your money. Yeah, and, uh, my, my opinion on this is we can just stop the project if we're going to dig it up. Uh, we voted on it, but the planning commission voted on it too. So we it can stop it. We right? don't have to do it, but okay. we can delay it. We can delay the yeah. project. Yeah, no, I mean, they're in. willing to hold it right now. Because right. I think we're just putting the cart for the horse on this totally. I mean, I, I, I want that street paved. But that don't make no sense. That's put the cart rewards on it. Um, uh, we could, I'd like to make a motion that we delay the project till we get funding for the water line if we're at that point. I'll second. Okay. Motion second. Any discussion on that? Oh, yeah. And I'll, I, I'm, I'm all for that. But I, um, after we're done with this, I think we need to go ahead and, well, I'll make a motion after this. All right. We have a motion to delay the paving project till we can see if we can get a grant for the water line. And get that going. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so oh. we've, 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 let's talk more about that, Evan. And I think Mr. Jones has some ideas he wants to share. I'm going to make a motion too, Mayor, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I like the motion that we start looking at um, getting bids. Like, let me start off. I'll make a motion that we look at bids and grants on getting that water line done in that area, on those, on those two. Specific areas right there. I'll second. What specific areas, Coleman? Main Street. Uh, Main Street between um, Ward and Smotherman, isn't it? Ward and Smotherman. Okay. Ward, yeah. Now, is the one going across the second half going to have to be looked at too? I don't think it will. Who's second at that? Any discussion of that? Y'all in favor? Aye. Uh, and just, just so you know, we are talking with TDEC about some of those funds that could possibly do this. So we have us on the radar to see if we could get that funding. Mr. Jones thinks we might still be able to get it in before the paving, if we push the paving back. So let's see what we can come up with. Let's hope we do. Um, <laughs> can you bring up, can you? Well, we've got one more. Yeah, can you update us on that at the next council? Sure. Meeting? Okay, thank yeah. you. And I think uh, city attorney, they might have all got kicked off. I don't know what happened. Well, they can still be on, but I think they went back to their vacation. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Mullins, are you still on? No, he's still on. Yeah, Mr. Mullins, Attorney Mullins, he's still there. Uh, Can you get can you go back to video please? The gift is about him. Oh no, he's invited and he's connecting now. Is that important that we do that? Yes, yeah, good point. I understand that, but I mean he's he's logged off, so and that's we're not supposed to be using Zoom anyway. So well, you can't you can do it's not for y'all. He's, he's logging back in. Um, anyway, anyway, let's go forward. Um, so the Third third Avenue embankment? Yes, Third Avenue retainer wall. That's the last one I got, yeah. unless y'all read something else. Um, we took bids on this again. We rebid it on September the 21st. Uh, the bids came in at this time at 320000 for the original design. We also did the um, alternate design where we shortened the wall. We took the slope to the fence, um, all the way to the fence, which required a little bit more embankment. The price for that wound up coming in at 350, so it costs more to have a shorter wall because there's more grade work. So you're, you're basically swapping uh, uh, excavation for the, the difference in your concrete and stuff for your wall. So 320 is the, the low bid at this point. Um, you have the option to award that, you have the option to reject it, is the options on uh, the third avenue retainable. 
And just a reminder that we'd be coming out of a reserve because we don't have any kind of grant. We don't have $320,000 in number of one wall. Um, we, we did talk to some other folks who were going to give us an estimate from a different angle, but I don't know that it'll be any less than that. <coughs> um, I, I, it's not a good situation because that's money we could pay one of our streets with. That's a lot of money. My motion we put it out to bid again just to see if someone hits it. Yeah, motion you have a second on that. Um, I do want to just I do want okay. you to know it was three thirteen the first time. It's three twenty this time, so you have the option of it still going up. I just eventually this bubble's gonna pop and it's all gonna come back down. <laughs> I agree. So I, just I, I'm just saying, I, just I feel do. like we can hold out uh, to this bubble pops. I mean it needs to be done, but for that amount, I mean I find it amazing that we cannot find FEMA money for something like this because that was clearly caused by the flooding. Yep. And why everybody else can get it and we can't well especially when you've got a cemetery involved. We we've tried. You can do it after the fact. In this particular instance, it wasn't caused, but you can do what they call preventative going forward. So I think Scott has applied to see if we yeah. can get they said preventative. They said what they ruled, because I sent in on the meeting, was that Earth itself is not uh, considered the disaster, so they don't cover it. Replacing dirt. Replacing yeah. dirt. <laughs> okay. If you lost a building, if you lost some kind of structure, that's crazy. They pay for that, but they will not pay for. Can I mean? But is there something we can do just temporarily, just to like so that nothing's done? But I mean, maybe something a lot cheaper that we could do. I maybe mean, it's just. I mean, what about putting riffraff or something on it? Well, the problem with that is you got to get it to stay, and it's so steep right now. You got to grade it, and the only way to grade it to where it'll even stay is to do this a wall so you can get a slope that'll maintain right now I mean even if we put a um, one of those you know T wall like put T walls behind it just I mean you get T walls for how much can how much does a T wall cost a few thousand bucks you could line T walls up against it and so if something happens be good to go why can't we do something to do on did on the bluff put the rock and the netting on there and have it anchored okay I'm just asking no, that right. I, I'm going to explain because we've all went through like there's there's <laughs> ten ways of going about retaining a wall. It all involves a wall. What you're running into down here is there's a cemetery. There's bodies in the cemetery that nobody knows where they're at. So all your contractors are very um, hesitant to drill back. All those things have to be drilled at a at an angle to hold back. Okay. So nobody wants to. They're going to they're going to bid it really high. Um, and the reason your bid went up from three thir uh, from three twenty to three fifty on the short wall, but more excavation is because we're getting closer. We're excavating closer to that fence, or there's bodies on the other side. So that contractor is he's also more skittish of getting. Um, and also, you got to think about when they're trying to build these walls during construction. They got to move this dirt, so it's unstable, more unstable than it is now. And if it comes a, a hard rain. Um, you know, you could have a have a, a, a problem there, so they're having to temporarily hold this thing back while they're trying to put a permanent solution in too. So that's some of your costs that you're incurring. Um, about how long, if they were to start the project, how long do we know about how long it would take to do the project? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. I, I probably get them probably 90 days or something. Okay, I'm um, just thinking if we put this off and we get to spring rains again. Are we going to be in more trouble because the spring's really bringing a lot of rain now? So, here's an idea. That's an idea, and I'm an engineer. You are. We used to have to haul in these big old T walls in our raptor, like 800 bucks a pop, and probably about $3,000 to install, okay? But they're like 14 feet tall T walls. Cover that, and just it, temporarily, so that nothing happened until we see this cost go down we could put five or six T walls alongside there and that's gonna hold it back I mean can we do T walls Would you explain a T wall is like a big you know the, the, the barriers you have on the interstate when they're doing construction those are like little small T walls T big T walls are like really tall it's the same it's they're concrete they just haul them in pick them off the truck put them in there you're basically just going to hold back whatever sloughs off and falls down and keeps it out of the road uh, you're still not going to stop the Erosion. The erosion and the 
possibility of a, of a failure, a major failure there on that unstable bank. So, could we temporarily go outside of the fence and ditch it to try to run the water off? Would that help any? I, I, diverting the water would help a lot. Um, okay. Could uh, do we have to go through the engineering to do that, or can the city do it? You don't have to. What do y'all think about it? Y'all the experts. I, I'm not putting you down. I didn't mean that, but no, I mean, we'll ditch her if you want to ditch her. Run it down oh, down there. Yeah, that's the trouble. They got six foot. I'm going to put the backhoe in there. No. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I don't think we need to do the three hundred and twenty freaking thousand dollars on it. But also, I don't think we need to not do anything either. So, I mean, let's attempt to do something. But we I mean, got to do something. I mean, Evan, I have a question. We have applied for one of these so-called preventative things for FEMA. It could be sometime down the line, even if we got it. If we waited to see if we got that, would we still be in a pretty bad situation? Or um, it's all a race against the clock. Nobody knows if it's going to going to fail again or not. Um, there's a possibility because I mean it's exposed and it's and it's you've had a failure there before, so. It's just a chance. I mean, I, I can't, I can't guarantee it's going to fail. I can't guarantee it's going to stay there either. So, well, and you can't guarantee that any costs will come down if we delay. Um, <coughs> no, or go up. I mean, right now inflation. I mean, everything's going up. And it sounds like days. the liability that goes along with it, and making sure that it's going to be right, is part of the cost. It's not just materials. Correct. They're it's going to have to yeah. stand behind that, and it's in a not, and it's in a kind of strange. Yeah, that's why we location. can't just put anything up there i mean this is i mean we designed this to, to be permanent it's going it's going to withstand anything that comes at it um, it's a huge percentage chunk of our operating budget we did it for three hundred thousand dollars steve did you yeah i'd like to make a motion that we move on from this and we table it till we can get some more information on what we can do to save money for the city in order to get this accomplished, but we need to act on it somehow. So let's move on to November for further discussion and maybe give it to Evan to see if he can come up with some other kind of plan that would work. Steve, I'll second your motion. We have a motion second to table this to November. Any discussion? Can I make amendments to the motion? Um, can the city bring us temporary plans on on this, on um, some ideas that will be this? That was in there. That was in there. Okay, we have a motion to move this to November, to table it to November. Would that bring some additional ideas and plans? Any further discussion? Yeah, Ed, Ed, uh, will there be additional ideas or are we going to be back to where we're at right now? Um, I mean, we'd give you the best design <laughs> for the situation. So this type of wall doesn't require any um, anything having to be drilled back to hold um, into the area of the cemetery. It's a it's a vertical wall. It requires the least amount of excavation during construction because the the whole idea is if you disturb that during construction, a lot of it and it comes a heavy rain during that process, it, there's a high possibility you're going to have a failure there. There's there's lots of different methods of retaining walls but in the end, it's all, it's gonna to have to be a retaining wall and you're just changing one type of retaining wall for another one and the price is probably gonna stay. Yeah, I, I, I agree something needs to be done. I don't know that it's putting off a month um, because I think we're gonna be right back here where we're at right now discussing the same things and we've lost a month and possibly went up in price. I don't wanna spend $320,000. <coughs> I don't think we financially even can uh, but we need to do something. We need to do that tonight, in my opinion. Evan, one more question because you did this. Some of the things that we sent to FEMA, FEMA, wherever. Well, is your experience that this kind of thing could qualify for a preventative? Um, I don't think so because they're not looking at this situation as being. Um, they don't look at it being the cemetery. They, they could at that meeting they could care less what was up there. They, they look more at structures being um, safe, yeah, safe like or, or a loss of them. Well, no, I'm not talking about the replacement. That other pocket of money they had that said we could then apply for preventative so it would prevent anything like that from happening in the future. 
Right. Well, he was saying it won't prevent, there's no structure up there for it to be. Yeah, they're not going to give you money. They're saying it. your soul is right. not, um, it doesn't qualify for being a replacement of anything. What about the church right or for being, um, The church is not y'all's property. It's still a thing, though. Yeah. We still owe it to the citizens of this town. Thing is going to try to skirt out of it. They always oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's kind of the thing to help us. That's, I mean, that's one thing. It's, it's not owned by y'all, so. Sam, did you? Question for Evan or Derek or Les. Uh, is it feasible to get a trencher, a small trencher up there to, how do you feel about that? It's going to be kind of iffy. Yeah. Well, I'd like to solve the part. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was afraid of that, but I just wanted to hear it. The guys mowing the yard almost had a, yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. I had to tell them not to mow anymore. It slid down. Mm. Yeah. I expected we put it on. Yeah, that sounds. It was liabilities. Or we say it with a motion to put it off for a month. We're still in discussion on it. So. Oh. One more question, Evan. Do you know of any grants or something like that? Have you I don't. Anything like that? I don't for a retainer wall. <coughs> And Jesse, I agree. We got to do something, but I don't. I don't have any information to do anything tonight. Yeah, and I think we just got to see what they can do and then vote on it. I don't like it either. We should do something tonight, but we don't have any information to do anything tonight unless we want to spend three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Basically, the only option as of right now. As of right now, we have only option. Option. I don't know that they're going to come that, next month. That's my problem. I don't know that we're going to come up with new well, that's solutions, the and if the price of what we're talking about right now may go up even in a month. I'm not. I mean. Anything remotely close to that, I, I I'm, I'm not gonna vote for that. That's, that's not. We are, we cannot afford that at all. For especially for just that little bit of a project, you know, it's, it's well, a major it's issue. issue. It's a major issue, though. It is a major yeah, it issue. Is. It is a little project as far as the space, but it's a, it'll be terrible if that thing falls down and fails on somebody. No, I mean. We'll have another one next, you know. If you walk year. in front of that church up there, the ground is getting soft in front of it. When the church goes, that's going to be something. In FEMA, maybe. Probably not. Well, have y'all have walked up there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, okay. It's soft up there. Yeah, we, we know that it needs to be fixed. We know it needs to be, we know it needs to be fixed, but, I mean, we don't. <laughs> I we don't know how. Into, they, they, they're, they're, that's ex it's it's awesome. crazy. It's crazy. But but there's got to be some other way to do can't it. Do it. There's got to be some other way to do it. I like the idea of at least waiting one more month and thinking about it, but I don't want to put it off any longer than one more month. And I have a suggestion. At that time, me and Scott both can see where the status may be of that FEMA preventative. I'm with Evan. I don't know that it'll do any good. We've submitted and we've tried different things, but they do have different areas to apply for. So, just two different plots. Yeah. I like the idea of what Cole said about the temporary barriers. The tea things that you're talking about, just to hold it for a while to make it out another. It ain't gonna fix it. I'm not saying that. Yeah, something fix, that fix at all. it, but just something temporary. <laughs> it's something that takes the possibility. I mean, if we're worried about someone getting hurt, well, that'll keep people from getting hurt. Yeah, because I can't. But I mean, it's, it's still gonna keep a problem there, but it takes that off. I feel like we're gonna spend ten thousand dollars or whatever it is to do the temporary and then turn around and spend three hundred and who knows if it's the that's three percent of the price that three percent of the price yeah i'm, I'm all yeah. for it no yeah. i know but i say and still spend what we're gonna gonna spend anyway and it may be more we could spend 400 plus the 10. there's a lot of uncertainty out there now i know there's a lot of well and we're asking our, our our city workers to do that something that they don't know if it's going to hold or not either right. that's liability to them we're not asking them for a guarantee. We're asking them just to alleviate something. Bill, you had a question. Yeah, I just, what I was going to say, it didn't have to be the 14 foot. It could be the other, the smaller one. It would be it some. It's expensive just to kind of keep the people away from that body. Just something. Yeah, that's something. your experience. Uh, they're talking about the traffic barriers. That's what I'm, and it's TKM. Uh, it's about the only, I mean, there's um, more, but there's a few companies that just come and set them up. I don't know what the cost is to do it, but so it doesn't hold back. Okay. Well, I mean, if it's slow, it's going to hold. It's going to catch it and keep it out of the road. Yeah. Les, how do you feel about that? Oh, they work. I'm going to keep it out of the road. 
Well, it ain't gonna be pretty looking either. Don't spend that much money on but that. It'll, it'll be right. safe until we can figure out something better. So, but I mean, something's got to something's got to give in this. We have economy. to have done really what yeah. the solution he's given us. It's just a matter of finding the funding to do it. Is that what we're talking about? Is the funding or waiting for prices or bids or something to happen? Because three years ago we did this project. It would have been a way, a whole different price and a whole different story. It could be another three years before we get back to it. It could be another three years, it could be a year, it could be ten years. We don't know. The bodies start falling out now, it's going to cost you more than that. Exactly. Yep. You're right. Yeah, I think the cost is going to go up <laughs> if we wait. And then we talked about one other possibility, the netting. The netting with the, with the vegetation, is that any temporary fix for that, do you think? They can still just... Well, it's, it's the whole... That's, that option, you still have to drill back mm -hmm. to hold, to be able to hold the, the nice. Mm -hmm. You're drilling in the dirt. It's just a bunch of dirt in there. So but, but there's, there's bodies. There's bodies and dirt. Yeah. There ain't there's no rock to drill into. The, Correct, but you got to go way back with us. It's a helix head. Yeah. Yeah. Like they yeah. don't think that that would work at all. But the netting's not going to stop the, if it's mud, it's going to slide through it anyway, isn't it? Correct. Well, you got some rocks on there. You yeah. put rocks under it and put them. Yeah. About the railroad ties, you know, like when they you tear us with railroad ties. I mean, I don't know if there's gaitians, there's gaitians, okay. you know, which is rip wrap inside baskets, which I've seen. True. Yeah. That's, but it's going to be. I've done talked. It's going to be about the same price. We, put, we can put some escos up there. It'll be rocking. Yeah. It'll rock out of escos. <laughs> but you just that's what I'm saying. You're going to change one type of pen wall for another, but in the end, it's still going to be. You're still going to be in the ballpark. Okay, we have a motion. I know there's a lot of discussion trying to second. table this. Second, 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 second. And yep. we discussed it. Do you can I? Do you want to go ahead and vote to table yeah, this vote. or not? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Opposed. Okay. So. Okay. Just, Four to two. So we'll table this to November, and if, if we discover something before then, we will get an email out to everybody and we can do about it. Thank you very much. Um, and we go into unfinished business. Yes, sir. Motion to limit discussion to two minutes per item per council person. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to limit to two minutes per item. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Uh, our CFO isn't here, but it's the second reading of the ordinance that we passed the first reading last Motion time. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Who seconded that? I'm sorry. Everybody. Everybody seconded that. Thank you. Everybody. Okay. Was it second, third, fourth, and fifth? Okay. 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 Second item is the purchase of a truck for the sewer plant. Uh, we, we've already sent out that information, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's right? in their packets. And that's in your budget, is that correct? Yeah, uh, we approved in the budget this year, I think about $100,000 to get a new sewer. So, uh, when we got to 91, we barely get through this year with it. But we waited for the 2022 prices coming out. So this is for 2022 Chevrolet 6500 four wheel drive, which was one of the main things we wanted was four to four. So one of the biggest problems we have is getting the stuff in the field and we have to call it back over from full of side. Uh, it's got a V8 diesel engine, Allison transmission, with a metal bed and a 1,500-gallon tank put on the back. Total price was uh, 66489 64 okay, So you came in under So we come in way under the 100, which Most we were kind of guessing. Second. We that number. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any discussion? You explain that truck like what's it what's it, what do you use that truck for this one specifically we're hauling sludge to the bale. that's just that's your sludge truck okay yeah, sir, you sludge i was truck. like i was thinking a regular yeah. work truck mm, good god okay that's, that's yeah. all the same thing we get a chance what's wrong with that yeah. so 66 is okay, that's what the, yeah the uh the bed and the tank is the sixteen thousand seven hundred eighty three to get the 1500 gallon tank put on the back the metal bed and actually, Chevrolet is the only one that has a four-wheel drive for okay. the factory. We priced, or tried to price through Ford and out of San, well, it's under Ford, Murfreesboro. We contacted them three times. They never give us a bid on it. Plus, their four-wheel drive would have been an aftermarket from another company. So with this being local, Wilson County, if we had a problem, we can get it back and forth. We figured this was the best route for us to go with. In the budget. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's in the budget. Yeah, it's in the budget. Yeah, I have a motion, motion, motion second. second. Any discussion? Further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. Uh, the grass and city streets, Councilman. Council Lady, um, <laughs> I'd just like to know where we stand on that. Have we seen any improvement with the grass on the streets? Yes. Is it still calling a problem? Yes. It's improved? Yes, it's yep. yep. Okay, good. Yep. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I, if we needed to take action, I wanted us to no. do that. But no, it helped. It helped. Okay. Good. It's not nice to ask me. Okay, okay, then we have item number four first reading of a health mandate resolution. Councilman Eagle. So this is not a, uh, I gave this to y'all last month just to be able to read it over. Um, whether you are uh, pro um, having a vaccination or not, that's not the point of this. Um, I, I support the right for everyone to do it, uh, do what they want. It's none of my business who vaccinated, who's not. Where we are in this country, and this happened since then, is we've got mandates coming down from federal levels, possibly state levels and um, it's not the government's job to mandate anyone to do anything with their health that is your choice um, we're not here to debate whether your choice is the right choice or not that's not the, the point is is what goes in your body is you cannot have someone forced forcing you to put things in so basically this is the same thing as the second amendment resolution we passed just with medical mandates so i just wanted to ask everyone if they would um you know Please, please vote for this. Um, you all have time to look it over, so if you all have any questions for me, happy to answer them. Second for discussion. All right. I have any motion to approve yet? Yeah. Motion to adopt resolution CR-20211007-1, bravo. Second for discussion. We have a motion second. Any discussion on that? I do feel like, um, Cole, with respect, that it's um, kind of a paper law. I feel like, um, that the piece of paper is, is not going to so basically if you've got uh, what we've seen a lot in the country is the, the, the medical field getting hit with this or uh, losing their jobs and I don't know that this uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong that this, this piece of paper would stop uh, say uh, it's not Smith County Memorial anymore, anymore but whatever it is up there the hospital for Carthage uh, would stop them from being able to do that is that the case? Is that what you're saying? No, this is a this is just basically saying um, it's 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 where we are in government. I'm constantly told the government's there to protect our constitutional rights, and that's what I'm constantly told. And constantly, I'm watching the government, us, we're the government, um, not doing that. And this is just us at our local level saying we're not going to stand for that. Um, we it's none of our business where your stance stances on this. There's no federal mandate that can do this. They're mandating right now that businesses with over 100 people have to do this, okay? Now, I don't think we have any businesses in the town of Carthage with that, so that really doesn't affect us. But what happens when they start doing it to 50 people, sure. to 20 people, to 10 people? Um, when, the, when we wrote this, it wasn't even 100 people. There was no mandates, but now there is. And a year ago, it was a conspiracy theory that anyone would ever do that, sure. and now we're here. And so this is to get ahead, and, and, and Let's say it's a paper, a paper law. Okay, it's just a paper law. But what is law? Well, I'm asking. That, and that, that's my, and it, we're in discussion. It's okay. okay. Civilized discussion. Then we'll come back to you if you don't mind. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. I'm going to echo what Jesse said. This, this is a piece of paper. We're taking your time voting on something like this. My recommendation is the the county is going to bring take this up also. If they adopt the resolution, I say we adopt the same resolution the county has, that we have the same wording, same verbiage in both resolutions, that way we're not wasting our time and double doing what we need to do. So I make a motion on the table this until, well, we're still in the middle yeah, of the motion. So this is just discussion for the motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Um, <clears throat> going back to what we talked about with the Second Amendment, again, if we go against state or federal law, we do risk. Um, just like some people lo risk losing their jobs, we risk losing state or federal funding. Absolutely. And also, I'm not sure that, that this is such a controversial issue that I'm not sure the town of Carthage uh, citizens would want us to be deciding this. So what we're saying is our liberties are for sale. Yeah. Because no, we will lose federal funding from our taxpayers. So we're, we're going to squabble over funding from Washington on our liberties. I'll answer that. I, I'm not. I'm not concerned. Um, 
nearly as much about uh, that. That's just a point. That's just one more point of why why not to adopt this. Um, but I, I'm not nearly as uh, worried about federal funding as I am putting more paper laws onto our city books. We've got several on there anyway that would we benefit from getting rid of. I don't think we need to add any more. And I'm all for people doing what um, what they feel is right. I'm, I don't want to get involved with, in that either in anybody's decision. But I just, I don't think this is, respectfully again, I don't think it's worth our time to. Well, to this do. is, a, in fact, exact, this would be, to your point exactly, this would be getting rid of a lot of laws that would be coming down. This would be. Potentially. Potentially, yes, exactly. So I agree with you, which is the point of this. So we shouldn't have paper laws, so we're going to create paper laws. Well, paper law, 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 paper law that just says, you know, any paper laws, the dozens and hundreds of paper laws are going to come down. This is going to stop. This, this, this is your cover. This we're, we're, not, we're not getting anywhere, y'all going back and forth. I think we've gone over the two minutes. We understand. Is there any further discussion? Does anyone want to call the question? Call the question. Okay, call the question. Just a second to that. Second. Okay. We've got to vote on the call the question. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We'll go back and now vote on the main motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. Voice of care. Thank you. Now we're going to number five, previous tax assessor invoice. <coughs> yes. Um, we were going to get an update from the city on where we are on that tax assessor invoice. It's okay. Sorry. All right. That's the timer. If you put a glass of water in the wall. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. That was the timer. I guess we went over. Go right ahead. Sorry. Um. We were supposed to get a report from the city on where we are as far as legalities between the tax assessor and voice, so it's well, we not really my thing. We have not heard back unless Attorney Mullins, have you heard anything back? Attorney Mullins? I'm sorry. I'm have you heard anything back uh, about the, the, the proposition that we, the proposal to the tax assessor from the three county cities? Mr. Winkler was supposed to be writing that letter. Uh, I, I'm, as I sit here right now, I don't want to tell you if I can't say 100% that the letter's actually been wrote at this moment in time. For some reason, I think it, it maybe it, has. It, it did go out. I'm not saying that. It did go out. We got a copy, I believe, of that. Okay, okay. Well, uh, and as far as to my knowledge, I don't think we've received a response from the county that I have saw. Now, that's not to say Mr. Winkler hasn't received one, but I haven't saw any type of response. Okay, Steve, you know, well, I was just going to say, you got, you're talking about this year's tax. Not, no, I'm talking about this situation we were talking about. Like, not, not the one we've already paid. Pay, you got the, got the one no, not the one we've already paid. So this is the one where the this one where we're disputing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'd That's like right. to just motion that we table this to, to hear the response next yeah. month. Second. Second. Okay, we table this. Uh, second, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, then we go to the next <coughs> item, six walking trail. Yes, okay. Um, anybody gone out to walking trail in the past month? Absolutely. Okay. We're in to check for that? Well, it goes in, you, it's three payments, so we, yes, we have. How many payments have we made? Two, five, one. Which one payment? payment, okay. I like to motion that um, we withhold payment on the, the second two until we get a situation on what's going on. Apparently they're not answering. I'll second. Well, I, I think well, the, we have sent them a letter. Mr. Attorney Mullins, yeah. that they are over. We can have a discussion now. Yeah. That's fine. Yes. Well, what I'd like to know, I'd to see what the actual contract says before we start with the payments. So if they say, they can plead this much, and you give this percentage, they can this much, and give this percentage. My letter is I did tell them that they would not, there would not be any further money issued that uh, they need to contact the city immediately um, about, you know, completing the project or this discussion on how to move forward if if they're not willing to complete the project to let us know so we can get another contractor and then we'll we'll 
you know, figure out exactly how much work they have done and what exactly they're owed, minus whatever liquidated damages okay. uh, the city would can have, I, uh, and we'll I figure update? that out. So I'm, May I update? This is the second because we do have a. Uh, in, in the contract, there was a 65, 60 day for initial finish and then a 75 to complete it. And as you're saying, we have gone over that it started June 24th. And so we're counting 75 days from there. So they have gone over and that's why we sent them the letter that they are now into liquidated funds. And we're giving them the leadway to get this finished or take action. Is that correct, attorney? Well, I can well, and I guess, I guess I need to ask the authority that question. That might be something you guys need to vote on. Since it is outside of the contract time for completion, do you, as a council, want to move forward? And I, I get their name wrong every time I say it. Is it ISCO? Isengard. Isengard. Do you, as a council, want to move forward with Isengard completing the project? Or do you want to move forward and try and find another contractor to complete it and let's work on what type of damage you might have with this car? Well, I, I think we I need don't. to find out how far we are or how, how close are we going to He's fixed to everything. He's in the warranty period. Also, with the liquidated damages, he has rain days, which was not addressed in the 90 days. So there are so many days he gets for every time. 75. Uh, 75. And, well, any bad weather. So but that was one of the things I was going to ask. Me. That's part of the contract the itself. Uh, the like, effect that day. And then y'all got, he did write him, so y'all got 30 days. I think it's 30 days by the contract, um, typically for them to respond and get it fixed, or y'all can take action at that point. But we're very close to. Well, y'all sent him a letter, so I'm in the time. Yeah, but how close are we to actually finishing? Are he you? has finished. He's just working on what he's already. He's technically graded the part. He's holding water in spots. So now he's going back and fixing those areas at this point. Is he fixing the pavement, the holes in the pavement? He will. That's what I'm saying. Okay. He gets he gets a punch list. All right. So he's substantially complete. Then you give him a punch list. Then that becomes warranty work, warranty period. Um, legally, you can't hold pavement um, by the contract. Oh, they. <laughs> The another thing would be nice if they pick up their trash. That's a very small thing, but if they can pick up all their trash that's kind of pop, pop, popping out everywhere. Uh, also, I don't know much about um, engineering, but we've got this nice paved um, handicap spot, and it ends. It's like a it's like a island there. They got to get to the walking track too. So I'm not really sure what the point of that is. And maybe that is that not part of the scope of the project? Are we going to pave the rest of the parking lot? That was part of the original uh, submittal that uh, Warren did to the grant for y'all to get. Y'all had to put that in, um, and that was the ADA portion of the trail. But it does go to the small. Oh, it does. It gets yeah. you to the trail. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's paved, it's paved over too, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Steve. But we cannot add anything. We could not add anything to the scope and we could not take anything away once we got in the middle of it. What was originally submitted to be done had to be done. What it looks like, I know this is, sorry, it is these. Make a motion that we move this past the 30 day notice that the attorney's given the company to make sure the work's been done and completed. If they do not fulfill the contract by then, we take further action. Second. Could you repeat that? <laughs> Okay. I make a motion that we move this past the 30 day notice that the attorney has. Got right I know, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> past the 30 day notice the attorney has given this company. If they do not complete the contract as agreed upon, then we take further action at that time. So you want to extend 30 days? Is what no, 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 we get the contract. Just like we were the contract. This up. I want to go. The, the attorney wrote them a letter for 30 days. That should take us to our next meeting. So we'll discuss this at our next meeting with the attorney's follow-up and then with Evans' follow-up. We'll know what actually was done per the contract. Okay. If they have not fulfilled their contractual obligations by next meeting, we take further action. How about that? Second. All right. So we've given them the 30 days to fulfill the contract. Any discussion on that? No, no. I I'm we're not, saying, I'm not, we're giving, not giving them, a, I'm not giving them 30 additional days. 30 days. We're I'm giving us 30 days to evaluate. To find out if they've come up with this. Take, we're not taking any action tonight. Okay. We're going to wait and see if they fulfill their contractual okay. obligations. Uh, the next meeting, the time, then we take further action. Okay, well, so we're tailoring the next time we take. And we want, we are with it. and because we're in discussion, there's places where <laughs> there should be 
drains going through underneath and they're not it's just going to puddle water up against concrete i mean it's like yep they it, it's like they went in and i mean it look it's terrible it's so well, that, bad that part wasn't theirs what, no. <laughs> what we had to design is what was originally submitted um they're trying their best to work with what's down there it's uh i'm not taking their side by no means i'm i'm on y'all's but it's so flat down there you, you're doing the best you can do to get that place to drain um, yep. without bringing in hundreds of thousand dollars worth of dirt to and that's a floodplain and you can't break you so I mean it's sorry. <laughs> it's just a bad area to try to grade uh, and maintain <clears throat> FEMA rules. Yeah, you're right because it once was a trailer park. And it was it's, it still it's feels like a trailer park. Yeah. And if Same. I'm hearing correctly, Call order. Evan, you have to stick to the original engineering plan. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was which you had nothing to do with. Yes, oh. yes, sir. That's correct. Okay, we just want to make that clear. <laughs> Yeah, we know where that problem came from. <laughs> Point of order. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. You want to take a vote? Yes, sir. All right. Let's have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'd like to real quick make a motion, and um, because it should be an unfinished business, and it's something we discussed last month, so to add an update for uh, what's going on with the lights at the park, because that's supposed to be under unfinished business. You're talking about on the ball field? Yeah. They're, they're on there. She put, she put it in the it's 100%. We got the brand new lights up, everything like that. Oh, that's tabled until January. That's the tabled January. Yeah, yes. they've got lights, very bright lights Timber. in the field. I'll, I'll resend my motion. Okay. Um, no, I just want to make sure we're The kids are very thankful to all of you as our parents and coaches and getting those down there. So. All right, uh, in new business, first reading. Oh, our building, our building codes. Um, we right now are 2012. We have to update to 2018 because 2012 will be up next year. Uh, everybody around is updating to 2018. Did we send? Yes, I sent it out. You have the motion to approve it. Second. Okay. A motion to approve the. It's an ordinance, so we're going to take two readings. Motion to approve on the first reading, then. Okay. Dude, what kind of, um, just like devil's advocate on this one, what kind of implications we got with these 2018 gold codes versus 2012? Is it, are we in there any major changes? Can we get advised on the major changes that might be happening? Uh, no, not, not any major, major updates on that. No, I don't have a problem with it, but anyway. Well, can um, I, um, but, but we do have to, because by law, we can't. Is it every seven years? Every seven, seven years. years we have to update. Oh, can I ask the attorney a question? Sure. Mr. Mullins? Sleep. Attorney Mullins? <laughs> there he is. We have a question. Oh, mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Hello. Attorney Mullins, have you looked at this or have you looked at this ordinance yet as far as the international building codes? No, I have not. Okay. I was wondering, I think we're going to vote on this tonight, but we got to read this twice. Um, can you look through this and see if there's any major changes on what we're voting on that can possibly affect us? Well, our planning person has looked through it, and our Lynn, and they both Our building inspector. So that'd be, that'd be, oh, okay, Lynn, Lynn. Yeah, I okay. have to, or otherwise can we have building folks. Then we ask this, and I apologize to determine rules. Can we have, can we have Lynn come in? Uh, the next council meeting and you know, explain any differences to us because there might be some stuff in there just knowing the way building codes are that sneaks in and makes things a lot more difficult for different businesses and different homes and makes it a lot harder to get things done and approved i mean i just i none of us here are doing do that, that so would you be okay with making doing the first vote tonight because it takes two votes and then let him well, come in next we've already made a motion we've already made a motion second to vote so, tonight okay. so we have to vote okay. either way because all right any further discussion, discussion on that well you didn't answer my question he, they can come next time yeah I'll can you him, okay you'll have some time sure. okay okay all in favor uh, all, right. all opposed opposed so. motion to approve special permit second okay uh special permit to first Baptist church all in, uh, any discussion on that all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we have here. Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay. Any opposed? No. Uh, lights on flagpole at 5L. 
I'd like to make a motion that we um, just get estimates on what it would cost to get uh, proper lighting on our flag poles at the fire department, at the city, and at the city park. Those are our three flags, correct? Got one sewer plant and the water plant. Well, it was one water plant. And city plant, plant, water plant. Okay, so all five of those. Second. Okay, we have a motion to get estimates on uh, for the four flags. Second, any discussion? Estimates on the lighting. The the flagpoles. Cost of lighting the flagpoles at those locations. Right. Okay. Any discussion? Are we being specific about which ones? Just so, because right here it says city park. Okay, I just you know just be clear. Specifications, just any any flags that we're responsible for as a city. Okay. We just need to be displaying them correctly. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Um, pavilion at city pool and lighting in city park. Uh, I would like to see us address the issue and investigate the issue to see if FEMA would allow us to extend the building that is used for storage now that used to be the concession stand at the city pool mm -hmm. is bring that roof out to the existing concrete area in the same width of that building so that we would allow or provide some uh, shade for particularly the parents that are down there with their kids. Less than I talked about it, we may not care because of FEMA, but it would be an open shed. It would be open, just probably what six, six posts or something like that. Yes. And would be should be fairly inexpensive to build. Okay, I'll second that. So we have a motion and second to check in if there's any regulations of FEMA that would prevent that. Any discussion? Uh, are you talking about the uh, the concession stand? The, the old one, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Where we used to go get candy bars. Just back, back in there, that. And that's just to find out if we can be right okay yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm, i have no issues with that can we before we do the project though we'll get bids on what it would look like and everything like that yeah okay so right now we're just checking with FEMA to see if we see if it's possible okay. see all, if we can all, do. all in favor aye. aye any opposed okay and the, as far as the lighting at the city park and less than i talked about it before the meeting uh my thoughts on it uh, are apparently not doable at this time but somehow on the streets through there we need more lighting because there's kids walking in the dark I you'll see people with a flashlight trying to get your kids back to their car and I would like to see us try to figure out a solution to that or something to help it anyway. Is that the same as in the parking lot you were talking about? That's the same one. The parking lot in the street in we front of the city park. Out there. Uh, we have checked with uh, other companies to put a pole that light in the parking lot yeah. and they did get the one of the existing lights going which helped a little bit are you talking about like on the from the swimming pool entrance there like along that wall like lights I'm, I'm talking uh, primarily on industrial drive from the area probably 100 feet south of jefferson to really close to where you turn to um, not more lane but the other ones. Anyway, yeah. there's so many cars down there, there's so many kids down there, it's so dangerous that we need to see if we can find- You're talking about out front though. Yeah, right, on the city, on the city in the parking lot, and on the C Street. So at the end of Jefferson, I what you're saying. Right. We can check in. Okay. Oh, I got you. Do we need to vote on that motion or we'll just check? Just check? I think just check on it right now. Okay, we'll do that. If that's all right with everybody. That's, that's fine. Uh, you know, y'all don't want to take business. We've already checked. We've about one of the other ones. Uh, do we have Now, we will come back and put a price if they, there will be a price for putting you post. We will come back to that. We'll right, that's okay. Okay. Our last item is uh, Peddler's Permit Council. Yes, I'd like to uh, motion to suspend the rules for five minutes well, we so that we can have some, have a, um, Mr. Woodard be able to speak to this. He's not so that, we, that we have to suspend the two minutes that you, we voted on. No, that's, this is a suspending the rules, there's no rules. There's right. a motion to suspend the rules for five minutes. From Second. Mr. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Mr. Woody? Well, uh, I have a prepared statement and it takes me 10 minutes to read it, so I'll read what I can. Uh, I've got the first
first off, start off by apologizing to Mayor Smith. Uh, I uh, submitted a permit and I thought I had uh, asked to exempt uh, all the vendors in the, uh, in the event, and uh, I did not. I did not realize that until after I had, uh, uh, she, she called me a couple of days before the event, and uh, I uh, looked at it and uh, she was in fact right. So Mayor, my, my apologies to you. I, I, I never intended to do anything. I'll read through what I can. Uh, you guys stop me, okay? Uh, Mayor Smith, ladies and gentlemen of the Carthage City Council, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm speaking on my capacity as the Executive Director and on behalf of the Executive Board of the Smith County Chamber of Commerce, a nonprofit organization which the Town of Carthage is a founding member and your presiding mayors by virtue of election are members of our Board of Directors. I come to you tonight to ask for your help and relief in, with the events performed by the Chamber for the benefit of the City of Carthage. The Smith County Chamber of Commerce is a tax-exempt 501c6 economic development corporation which has a joint mission with the county and municipal governments to foster economic growth and development. We're charged to do this while promoting business growth and acquisition of new commercial and industrial businesses locally. The Smith County Booster Club, which was a consortium of local merchants from Carthage and Gordonsville, was the first organized effort to bring customers into the towns. After several successful years, the Booster Club businesses formed an organization to represent the interest of Smith County and the cities. The Smith County Chamber of Commerce was formed in 1974 by the will of the incorporated towns, the county government, and the local business leaders to promote industrial, commercial, and tourist growth locally. Due to the forward thinking of those community-minded individuals, the industrial park in Gordonsville was started and flourishes to this day decades later. Cooperation was the key to the success of these efforts and remains so for the chamber. The chamber's mission I will not read for uh, sake of time. Uh, you can find it on the uh, website, uh, but it's basically to promote growth. On behalf of the executive board, we formally pledge to you the Smith County Chamber of Commerce is here to support the businesses and organizations of the Smith County, the town of Carthage, the town of Gordonsville, the town of South Carthage, and the Smith County government in any reasonable way as directed by our charter and our board of directors. It's my hope that this cooperation will extend back to the Smith County Chamber of Commerce from each of our partners and members. Prior to my current tenure of eight years, and in time past, a privilege of the Smith County Chamber of Commerce was to host events in the various towns in the county. The purpose was to promote each town and the local businesses in an effort to bring business from out of the county into each town. One of the first of these events was the Bluegrass Festival, which became so successful due to the large crowd, the local merchants opted to move it to the defeated Creek Marina. Subsequently, Operation of the event was given to the Defeated Creek Volunteer Fire Department, and it has been successful since that time, bringing people into the area each year. Another was the Iris Festival in Gordonsville, which isn't currently being held. Then, of course, the event in Carthage that has become the William Walton Harvest Festival. It started out as Pioneer Days many years back, then became Rendezvous on the Square, back to Pioneer's Days, and subsequently wasn't held for a couple of years. Mayor Sabra Hodge asked us to take the material and fixtures that were left from these prior iterations to jumpstart a new event called William Walton Harvest Festival. Since starting under Mayor Hodge's tenure and continuing through Mayor Donnie Dennis's tenure to arrive to the current administration, it has grown each year. At the startup and afterwards, the street closure and anything to do with the public safety side of the event was handled by Mayor Hodge and Police Chief John Hogan, which is now uh, Chief Britt Davis and Rescue Squad Director Jackie Carver through Sonny Carver, the current EMA Director. The Smith County Chamber of Commerce supplied the dates and times to them, coordinated the event, obtained the vendors and demonstrators as we currently do. We perform these functions for the town of Carthage as we would do for any of the towns. The proper place for a festival celebrating Smith County's heritage should take place at our county seat on the main street in front of our historic icon, the Smith County Courthouse, which was constructed in 1879. On the subject of licensure, the state of Tennessee is very clear. The state of Tennessee requires business license, uh, businesses with taxable sales of $10,000 or more to have a statewide business license issued by the Tennessee Department of Revenue. 
Businesses with taxable sales of more than 3,000 but less than 10,000 require a minimal activity license. This was the only licensing requirement for any business in the state required by the state of Tennessee to my knowledge. Also, the businesses to apply for the license in their resident county. Mayor Smith graciously sent me a copy of the Town of Carthage Title IX Business Peddlers, Solicitors, etc. Ordinance. The part of the ordinance which would be applicable to William Walton Harvest Festival and all other festivals inside the city limits is section 9101.6 and it states, 6. Street Barker means any peddler who does business during recognized festivals or parade days in the town and who limits his business to selling or offering to sell novelty items and similar goods in the area of the festival or the parade. This one, it appears to require a peddler's license for anyone participating in a festival. Okay, if you ask, what is the president's? One would be obliged to point out that at no time up to the current year, no city in Smith County nor the county government has charged any fee or license fee to any visitor, a vendor participating in a festival or fair operating within their authoritative territory. If you ask, what is the position of the other municipal authorities within Smith County? Currently, Gordonsville, South Carthage have, nor currently do they plan to charge community festivals a fee of any kind even though they have an ordinance in place. The Smith County government have not and currently do not levy fees on festivals on county property. As an aside, our local economy is integrated. The Gordonsville Industrial Park was developed through joint effort of the Chamber, County, and Cities. When the Industrial Park workforce is spendable payroll increases, it boosts the sales tax in our retail center, which is basically the town of Carthage. Yet only the town of Gordonsville, with some help from county and state, has the responsibility for upkeep of the infrastructure. We all benefit from the success of each other, and we're in this together. If you ask what is the position of surrounding counties and cities, here is an email result of a poll from the Upper Cumberland Tourism Association membership. I'll uh, present this to you in a moment. Uh, the question was, do cities or counties charge a peddler's fee, a transient vendor fee, or a solicitor fee to vendors or exhibitors that come to their events held on the city streets or in the county roads? Granville, we don't have that type of charge. Livingston, depends on the event and the purpose, but most of our booths spend a lot of money, so we don't ask for fee. Salina, Clay County, these events are managed by certain charitable organizations. To my recollection, uh, there's no vendor fee. Uh, Macon County, not to our knowledge. Typically, any fees are charged by whoever's hosting the event. Jamestown, Fentress County, we do not currently charge anything. The lady, Patty Purdy, who is the executive director of the Upper Cumberland Tourism Association, said, I helped with an event in Putnam County. The vendors paid the event coordinator. It was up to the company uh, hosting the event to pull in permits or hire security, but she was not aware of any fee that the city or the county, Putnam County, charged. Smith, DeKalb County does not charge any fee for the Fiddler's Jamboree or other events on the city square. I verified that with the coordinator, Ms. Suzanne Week. Jackson County does not charge any fees for any vendors or events in Granville, Tennessee. I verified this with uh, Mr. Randall Clemens. If you ask what the benefits to the town of Carthage, positive exposure to outside vendors and visitors, increased revenue on the daily event, uh, an event that teaches and remembers our heritage and roots, it's just plain fun. If you ask who charge a booth fee, where does the money go? The money that is generously provided by our sponsors and a booth fee all go toward the presentation of the next event. None of the funds that are generated by these events go for Smith County Chamber of Commerce expenses or salaries. It is all used to support events in Smith County and the cities. Ms. Nancy Richardson keeps financial records for these events and they are available for any Bill, chance. Question here. Yes. What are the fees for the peddler's permits that we charge? $20? $25. No, okay. No. 20 I believe. Is it $20? $20. 20. And it's not just for this event. It's any event because the state requires it. So if we, for the market fest, everybody okay. signed it it's for a year. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we waive the $25 peddler's permit fees and just issue peddler's permits to people that are coming in our city to sell their wares. That way there's no money taken in. Second. Second. It's 20. Well, 20. Waive the $20 fee and just issue permits. If other cities are not charging them, we, we shouldn't have to either. And Period. we haven't in the past. Yeah, there's no reason to start. But, and, and that should include the 
Market fest. No, off, off fees. Off fees, yeah. No more peddler fees. No more peddler fees. So let me ask you, do you charge a booth fee? Adam, yes. yes. And that's what puts the next event on. That phone's All the those money's go toward the next event. So can we, attorney, can we, do you have any thoughts about legally, can we do this? Could, could I read, may I be allowed to read one thing? State Tennessee Code Annotated 62-30-104 uh, exceptions from the chapter. The chapter does not apply to any corporation, community chess fund or foundation organized or operated exclusive for religious, charitable, scientific, literary, or educational purposes of which no part of the new earnings benefits private any uh, yep. private shareholder. Two, state fairs, arts, craft fairs, other fairs and festivals conducted primarily for amusement or entertainment, wholesale trade fairs, the sale of agricultural, agricultural products or handcrafted products, a uh, person operating that permanent, and it goes on with flea markets. It's it's already exempt by state. Most of us done our homework on that. Thank you for reading that. But I've already took care of that. Call a question. Call a question for yeah. both. May I just interject one? No, there's a call a question. question. Call a question. And you've already thrown this down our throat saying it was required by law, and apparently it's not. Well, call a question means we got to vote. Can we hear from an attorney? We, we heard your ordinance. Okay. I, if you don't want to hear a legal opinion from our attorney, they can speak. Call the question. Mr. Mullins, have you have you checked into this? Attorney Mullins? Can, can you hear me? My yes. phone keeps muting me yes. for some reason. Um, I have looked into it and it's very surfacely. The mayor and I had discussed this issue on the phone. Um, to give you an absolute um, answer to your question tonight, I can't give you a hundred percent answer to it. The way the mayor proposed the question to me and what little bit I've known based on what she said, um, I think your ordinance does require you to collect a fee. Now, furthermore, the law that I was sent that I thought applied to this issue, and I'm not 100% sure if it still applies to it, the gentleman speaking, and I, I can't I'm terrible with names. I can't remember his name. Um, I don't know what law he's referring to. I'm not saying it's not a law, but I, to really give you a formal opinion at this moment in time, I can't really. As I told the mayor on the phone whenever I talked to her, there's other portions of the statute that require a peddler's permit to come into place, like the, the statute that I read personally that say that the event has to be taken taking up a tax on e each day and that was my question because if, if the event's not taking up the tax then necessarily a peddler's permit isn't required I, in my opinion of the statute i read that was the one statute that i was provided so to give you a really formal opinion i don't I, I don't know that you necessarily have to can, can uh, take up a peddler's permit um, I did see that there was one exception as to the statute I read that you weren't required to have a peddler's permit um, if you were selling your own agricultural goods and that was goods that you actually made. Now, as far as, like I said, these exceptions that this gentleman's bringing up, I would need to do further research on that. Let me, let me um, ask you if you want order. We've called the uh, question. We've called, we, we, there's there's okay, Robert's well, Rules of Order, Mayor. Okay, we have to vote. there is a law here, so uh, is the question you just don't want to, I mean, we have to have a The, the call to question, can, can point weigh, of order. Can you, let me finish, please. We can weigh the cost if that's what you want, but they do have to have. That's exactly what I said. Okay. So We still issue the permit, yeah. but don't charge a fee. Yep. That was the most Exactly. Okay. Listen up. Okay. We will. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay. Now we got to vote. Now we got to vote. That was voting on call to question. Now we got to vote on his motion. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, Mayor, did you want to address that tonight? And motion to adjourn. What is that? That's the Next. bid that Mr. Jones talked about. Oh, hold on just a minute. We do have a bid. We haven't, we haven't done that. Mr. Jones, what is it again? It was the one for the future alley water main that Mr. Okay, Jones yeah, we have Mr. Jones have to vote on this. Do we want to take was, that bid or not? Was it on the agenda? Yes, it was. I said, was it? I didn't no, think it was. It. it was covered in engineering reports. Yeah, so that's not on the actual agenda. No, so you have to. You have to. So add we can't do it. So well, we can add it to the agenda. We can vote to add it. So all right, motion added to the agenda. Second. 
Okay. We have a motion to add it to Virginia um, agenda. Favor. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion to approve. To approve the bid. Motion to approve the bid. Any discussion on approved This is for water wine. I, I just have I have one concern and I don't I don't I'm in a city council position right now, but it's also a concern for my business, so I want to make sure I'm doing this appropriately. Um, so, do y'all I, I want to make sure I'm doing this, so I'm not trying to, I have a handicap entrance to my restaurant, and then there's other entrances in Futural Alley. I'm just curious about what the, what the diversion is for my hand, handicap access, we're if, just, if that's still going on. We're just approving the bid, we're not actually approving it. Okay. Okay. We, we can go ahead and I don't want to. I'm not trying. To, I, I just want to clarify. I didn't know. This is not to use my position whatsoever. It's a concern I have. So. Okay. So All motion right. is to approve the bid. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion I, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I got some discussion on adjournment just real quick because I just wanted to hear this. The city temporary fix the the deal with UCMC. Correct. And UCMC is going to hire a company to fix it. The concrete pole in front of Robinson. So we're oh, yes. we're yes. done with that, yes. correct? Yes, we're done. Okay. Cool. All in favor?